The universe is 13.8 billion years old, and the metaverse is only 30 years old. Now that's still younger than the Matrix Saga, but unlike the Matrix Saga, the metaverse doesn't seem to be coming to an end in a crash and burn overhyped film in 2021. <music> The term metaverse was first coined by Neil Stephenson in his 1992 novel, The Snow Crash, which was probably a novel about the hangover following a sugar rush. Some critics say that the novel was instead about a computer-generated universe, but I'll trust my own research. Point is, the metaverse is only dominating the media today because a certain social media giant decided it's no longer going to be a social media giant. Instead, it would be the market leader of taking screens that were at our fingertips and jamming them right up to our faces. In all fairness though, calling Facebook a social media company is as much of a misnomer as calling the F1 Grand Prix a go-karting competition. You wouldn't be wrong, technically, but the DNA of Facebook has always been about connecting people. The tech lords at Facebook used to think that social media would be the best tool to do that. And now they think that the metaverse is going to be the best tool to achieve that. And guys, in order for the tech lords at YouTube to grant my video more visibility, hit that subscribe button and leave a like on this video. So this metaverse is the newest thing to hit the streets. Big deal. If you've ever played video games, and yes, the 90s evergreen first-person shooter Doom counts, then you've been in the metaverse. If you've been a part of an MMORPG like Dota or League of Legends, you've been in the metaverse. And for my audience members who have yet to get a driver's license, if you've played Fortnite, you guessed it, you've been in the metaverse. The gaming industry has paved the way for what metaverses ought to be like. And now, much like Morpheus, Red Billing Neo's fun and games, companies like Meta, Microsoft, and Nvidia are moving past the fun and games and creating multiverses in which people can work, socialize, and run simulations. Now look, I get it. The forests are burning, the sea levels are rising, billionaires are ejecting themselves into space at an alarming rate, and maybe now isn't the best time to find new ways to abandon the current reality we live in. I hear you, but like it or not, the metaverse space is projected to be worth trillions and neither you nor I can escape it. And now it is more important than ever for you and I to learn about how the metaverse is evolving so you and I can participate in it and guide its development. Because otherwise, the only people that are going to be making decisions about what the metaverse becomes are going to be hoodie and flip-flops wearing soylent drinking code monkeys from Silicon Valley. And quite frankly, that would be scarier than waking up in the human farm in The Matrix. And speaking of The Matrix, you must remember the iconic scene where Neo slows down time to stop bullets. And much like that, but way less cooler, our interactions in the metaverse will not be limited by the laws of physics. Because while right now we're limited to likes and comments in the 2D internet, we can't even imagine what kind of interactions are going to be possible in a real-time 3D rendered metaverse. But that is a double-edged sword. What kind of community guidelines and rules should exist in the metaverse to make it a safe and inclusive atmosphere? Because cyberbullying and harassment is possibly going to be a lot worse if it is left unchecked. On November 1st, 2021, when Facebook first opened beta testing for its metaverse, Horizon Worlds, there was already a complaint by a beta tester that she had been groped. There are creeps in the real world, there's going to be creeps in social media, and sure as heck, there's going to be creeps in the metaverse roided out on their creepiness. If you've ever played video games, and yes, Doom from the 90s counts, you'll know how addictive it can get. And much like video games, the metaverse is going to be more immersive than anything we've seen on social media platforms. For example, how can we build a metaverse that doesn't snowball the already skyrocketing teen depression caused by overuse of social media? Lastly, the metaverse is going to be built on billions of 3D avatars getting rendered who are interacting with each other via 3D gestures all happening in a 3D world that is unraveling real time. So if you were buffering at any point in this video, you're out of luck, my friend, when it comes to using the metaverse. The internet needed to power the metaverse will need to be tremendously powerful. And unfortunately, this may mean that the less fortunate nations may not be able to participate in the metaverse unless we actively try to build the metaverse in a way that is accessible to users who are still limited to only watching YouTube videos in 240p. Because if the metaverse that we're building isn't inclusive, what we will be using our super fast internets to do 
is push people further apart. And that is a metaverse I do not want to be a part of. Until next time, stay real. I'll see you on the other side. Peace.